Welcome to another edition of Answers for the Family. I'm your host, Alan Cardoza. And for those of you that have been listening, sending in questions and comments, thank you so much. And please continue to help spread the word that each week this show will bring on special guests that can inspire, educate, and in some cases entertain while bringing answers and options to making our lives happier, healthier, and more successful. And we will introduce you to top professionals and talented authors who are working to make this world a better place for all of us. Now, I would really appreciate it if you could all do me a big favor. Please forward one of our shows to your social media group and to someone you know who can benefit from today's show. This is one powerful way we together can make a positive difference in the world. Now, many of our shows fall under the category of catch them doing something good. Well, this is certainly one of those shows. And with all the negativity and divisiveness out there these days, I hope that you will find AnswersForTheFamily.com to be a place you can go to see or hear some of the good that really is happening in the world. Now, I want you to know that I'm grateful to all of you that take your precious time to listen to this show, because remember, this show exists for you. Now, with that in mind, if there was ever a time in recent years that we needed to focus on gratitude, this is the time. Well, my son and I wrote the Attitude of Gratitude Journal, something that at the time was geared toward teens going through some changes and challenges in their life. Well, we're all going through changes and challenges in our lives now. So please go to our website at AnswersForTheFamily.com and download a free copy. It is our gift to you. Now, all I ask is that you subscribe, which is also for free, and give it 21 days and comment on whatever platform you listen to us on, what focusing on gratitude has meant for you and your family. Now, a quote that is not in the journal, but should be, is by our guest. It says, uh, <laughs> loving and energizing others is the best possible thing that we can do for ourselves. Now, as a young man, our guest, James Redfield, studied Eastern philosophies, including Taoism and Zen, while majoring in sociology at Auburn University. He later received a master's degree in counseling and spent more than 15 years as a therapist working with abused adolescents. During this time, he was drawn into the human potential movement and turned to it for theories about intuitions and psychic phenomena that would help his troubled clients. In 2000, I'm sorry, in 1989, uh, he quit his job as a therapist to write full-time using interactive psychology, Eastern and Western philosophies, science, futurism, ecology, and history. James's first book, The Celestine Prophecy, rose to become, you ready for this? Okay, the number one American book in the world. It was a New York Times bestseller and number one international bestseller. This phenomenal novel spent over three years on the New York Times bestseller list. Now he continued the story with the sequels, The Tenth Insight, Holding the Vision, The Secret of Shambhala, In Search of the Eleventh Insight, and The Twelfth Insight, The Hour of Decision. James is also the author of the nonfiction title, Celestine Vision, and co-author of God and the Evolving Universe. He also co-wrote and co-produced the film version of the Celestine Prophecy movie. Now, among his many accolades, James was awarded the highly prestigious Medal of the Presidency of the Italian Senate at the 2003 Pio Manzu International Conference in Italy. James has received Humanitarian of the Year Award honors from both his alma mater, which is Auburn University, and the International New Thought Alliance. James, welcome back to Answers for the family. Thank you very much. Nice to be with you, Alan. Well, it is it is my pleasure, and I would love if you could um, kind of bring us up to date. So, bring the listeners up to date as to what you've been up to since the Celestine prophecy, and bring me up to date since the twelfth prophecy, because that's the last time I spoke with you. <clears throat> well, it's very interesting. Uh, you know, I think it's a new time in the world. Uh, we uh, uh, have re-released the Celestine Prophecy. Uh, it's being passed around by two new generations, uh, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and, that, and until the shutdowns, you know, we were touring mm -hmm. widely internationally. 
So, uh, you know, those uh, are very exciting times um, out there uh, uh, for um, me. And, uh, and I think it, it's uh, reason to be optimistic uh, because these two uh, generations are looking for more in life and it's, uh, they're asking the higher questions suddenly. And, and that's really because they, their generation is reaching a certain age, you know. Well, it's really, really three generations all asking what larger questions because the baby boomers want to know what about legacy? Look at this world. What can we do to help? Mm -hmm. A higher question. Uh, millennials are reaching that critical age of 38 to 40 where you say, okay, I did my duty. I've, I'm a parent. I've, I've, I'm you know, making a living. Um, and, but, but what I really want to do with my life. And then you have the the uh, the children of millennial of uh, millennials, yeah, that who who are facing college, mm -hmm. winding up. I mean, they, these are all these are three huge generations, all asking the higher questions. And then on top of that, what do we have? We have uh, a pandemic that has shut us down. You know, we're staring out the windows mm -hmm. uh, at at the at the world going by suddenly left to our own devices in, in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of people lost income. I mean, this, this was a sh shock, but what it do does do, I think, is create a kind of spiritual reset. And when I say spiritual, uh, I mean uh, a kind of spiritual consciousness that we can break through to uh, that proves, proves to us that there's something else besides the material reality that a lot of people still point to as uh, all there is. So it's a, it's a remarkable time in the world because of what's happening. We have social unrest. Uh, and, and, and in a way, I think both the house arrest, if you want to call it, yeah. and the, and the uh, social unrest uh, it's all part of the reset. And I, I think what's happening in terms of the, uh, you know, social justice as a topic out there, uh, it's, it's actually healing uh, some racial discord that, that was uh, out there uh, without any conversation about it. So now the, the positivity of that is, hey, we're talking about it. And uh, people are reaching out to each other more in love and support. And uh, that's happening across all these divisions. So, you know, I'm, I, I, I argue that as hard as this is for, for many of us, oh, uh, it's, it's a reset in terms of looking for uh, spiritual answers. And I would argue uh, that spirituality is the spiritual consciousness is something that every person can prove to themselves is real. Uh, it's, it opens up our intuitive intelligence, uh, which makes life go easier. Uh, life is not supposed to be this hard. Uh, the structure of the universe in my view is uh, offers help to us. We just have to tune in and be you know be very very alert to the, kind of the the flow of mysterious coincidences that can lead our lives forward uh, and solve every problem we have so that's a mouthful yeah uh, i'm more excited <laughs> after the books you know I'm, I'm more excited than ever before because i think again we have uh all of these generations asking the larger questions uh, we're, we're on our own, which is what you do in meditation anyway. Mm -hmm. you, you, you learn to live with yourself and you, you open up your intuitive intelligence. And there's more, actually more meditation going on in the world now than ever before in history. So it's, it's very interesting um, uh, to be out there now talking about this again and having more and more people saying, you know, I'm tuning in. I, I know what you mean by intuitive intelligence. Uh, and boy, that's a lot of fun.
Well, and it's it's one. First of all, it's one of the things that I love about you and what you do is is it is that focus of the positive. And and when your book came out in the '90s, we were going through some issues as it related to kind of greed and things like that. And and your book really opened the eyes for a lot of people into our consciousness, into meditation, and so many positive things. And then again, uh, you know, you know, in about 2012. Uh, when the 12th Insight came out, uh, again, there was a lot of things going on around the world. And if people turned on the news and they would see that, you know, all these Arab countries are being destroyed and this is happening and stuff. And you were really focusing on the consciousness of it and what can come out of it. And, and, and I just, I, I absolutely love that, uh, you know, that you're doing that. And in fact, you know, talking about that, you know, when you wrote the 12th Insight, uh, it was, it was right before you know, the whole Arab Spring uprising and things like that, and many of the other changes around the world. Now, as you were as you were preparing uh, this book, it was as if you knew, you know, that these things were going to happen. How does that work from the standpoint of, you know, were you seeing something, um, or were you feeling an energy? Because a lot of the things that you wrote about in the book, and at the time you wrote the book. As I was reading it, and I'm going, wow, these things are happening right now, and yet I knew that you had to have written the book before this. Um, talk a little bit about that and the, the energy that you're feeling that helps keep you so positive as well. Well, you know, first of all, the current message right now is that you can prove that spiritual consciousness is real mm -hmm. uh, to yourself. And the reason for that is that there, uh, the, the, uh, the human potential movement, which is a real scholarly and mystical kind of debate about what exactly is going on on, this, on the planet from a philosophical and growth point of view, it's 100 years old. And it began, began with, uh, with Carl Jung, Dr. Carl Jung, who was a, a protege of Freud, uh, but what he did with breaking with Freud is that he made uh, the idea of growth, the idea of helping each other, uh, mm -hmm. the idea of therapies, all that went spiritual. That's 100 years ago. So since then, there's this, uh, this huge conversation of all these people, adepts, mystics, scholars, uh, you know, all debating what's real about spirituality in the world. And I think at this moment, with all the other stuff, I think we can say that the, the, the uh, human potential movement has reached a consensus about what spiritual experiences are available to humanity and how they work and how you prove to yourself that they work. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the optimism comes from that. That's a, that's a huge uh, awakening that's happening on the planet right now that is, uh, is, is there's, there's no real celebration of it with all, this, all that's going on, you know. But it's, the, it's so much of the answer to what we're facing. Uh, so that's, you know, that's, that's how... That's why I say optimistic, because I think there are reasons to be optimistic. I mean, the human race is still evolving. And, and, but how do we get more people to, to stay focused on that? Because, you know, at the same time in which, yes, there is certainly a movement of, of people, and we can look at it now. I mean, if you would have said, you know, um, I don't know, 30 years ago that there was going to be a yoga studio you know, on every other corner, people would have laughed at you. So, uh, you know, so yes, things are moving forward, but it appears as though there is also a faction or, or some group anyway that is focused on chaos. And so, you know, th there's this battle that seems to be going on. And uh, the, the ones that are focusing on chaos have, have taken over the media, so they seem to get more publicity than than the fact that there is so much good going on as well. Yeah, well, you know, the, 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 the 
the path to uh, consciousness is unifying. And uni unity brings cultural change. And there are entrenched uh, forces, you know, that we, I, I just sort of uh, label them the dark side uh, because it's not really a war, you know? I mean, these, are, these aren't the people that um, we, we want to hate. You know, if you, in, 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 which is why, you know, if you're listening, if you're listening to a, a politician, you know, if you're screaming at the politician, you're, you're listening to on um, um, television, you know, it's, it's clear that you're joining the dark side. <laughs> so our, our role in all that uh, briefly is in my view to, to stay in, in the light and stay in this, the, uh, the reinforcing energy that we can get that there is a progressive evolution centered around the whole, uh, the whole idea really of heart opening and the you know, love-based meditations that I recommend mm -hmm. uh, so that, you know, and, and again, I sometimes argue with my compadres out there who talk about self-actualization, you know, as though we're doing it all ourselves and that's not what, that's not the experience of it. You know, the experience of it is that we're getting help uh, and that's what makes life go easier. Uh, mm -hmm. over, but I'd argue uh, with a lot of people about the idea of should love be a part of this? You know, can't we just say consciousness? Because, you know, they, they have the, the feeling that, oh, well, love is, you know, it's, it's amorphous, you know, it's, it's kind of a, this, this odd, um, this odd f the emotion uh, it's it's wishy-washy. It's not powerful. It's mushy. It's all those things, right? So we got to got to quit saying love. But you know, I really resist that because love is the most powered, most empowering, central emotion. It's our master emotion. All the lower emotions bounce off love once we uh, have it strong in our uh, in, in the way we give. So if we're giving energy, advice, whatever we're giving to others. If it's that, if it reinforces that love base, then that's as strong as you get, mm -hmm. because with it comes in a kind of intuitive guidance, uh, that uh, an intelligence, so that you 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 know you're almost given from this intuitive intelligence within us the moves to make to solve every problem, the moves to make to uh, actualize our selves and our mission in life and and uh, move into an energetic fulfillment in life so you know here i am talking about this in the midst of this chaos but it's only to say that the people who want chaos know that division brings power because then they can they can uh, you know offer each side a a, a, a big power solution you know a big corporate mm -hmm. solution you know just trust us we'll We'll build this utopia for you. Well, it's not a utopia they're building. You know, it's yeah. a complete loss of freedom, as you know. Yeah. So, uh, the gullible go with that, but we have to be very uh, democratic about sharing power as we evolve forward. Uh, and I think that, uh, yeah, the dark side is, yeah, do what they do because they're hooked in this fear model this fear system where, you know, power is the only solution uh, they have for the, you know, for human anxiety, for existential anxiety, you know, so they, if they just got enough money or more money all the time, then, then they can feel halfway uh, secure, but not really, because it's a right. hole that can't be filled by money and power, right? So the, as the evolution goes forward, our job is to be in this consciousness and have it look, when we live it out loud, we, it's a much more appealing way of living than being stuck in fear. And the, the idea, you know, as we pursue consciousness, we're in the replacement business. You know, we want people who need power and greed and all the rest to come over to the light side. 
So that's where we are. And, and, that's, and, 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 and that's certainly ideal. I mean, that, that would be great if we could get that to happen. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the tour, but one of my thoughts were, okay, you've, you, you've written some incredible books and, and then you wrote sequels to it. So you, you kept telling the story, which was great. Um, why now shift to a tour? What is different that, um, that people are going to be able to get from a tour rather than you deciding, well, I'm just going to write another book? Well, because what you get from books is this, you know, the, the archetypes, pathways in our brains can fire up and feel so inspired. Oh, you know, the self-same prophecy left people sensing this level of inspiration that's available in the world, right? But it, there's another, the whole another question about how you sustain that, that in what I call inspiration energy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people read that book often because they get back tuned in. But, you know, my message again now is that we understand the key spiritual experiences and uh, that open us up to spiritual consciousness and how to do it. So, you know, uh, you know what, what we were doing on the road is to, uh, you know, present a, a, a detailed kind of uh, behavior change, reaction to the world change, uh, the way to sustain this level of inspiration energy and not get out, not just uh, keep from being knocked out of it, but to know the procedures to come back, which we can talk about, uh, because that's the most exciting thing about now is that via the, you know, these scholars and adepts and all this conversation about what's involved in spiritual consciousness, you know, we've reached a consensus in my view of how to actually live it. And that's something that everybody can, uh, can pursue and prove to themselves is a reality. Well, and yes, and, and I love the fact you said it's something that everybody can do. Um, and, and at times when people will say, well, I don't understand, you know, why, you know, why don't we hear more about this or whatever? And I think it's because people haven't, uh, you know, haven't monetized it, you know, <laughs> you know, because it's something that we can all do. It's great to be able to, to belong to something and be able to do something with other people, but you can do it in your own home. You can, you, you know, you, you, you can and meditate we're, anywhere. Yeah, you know, we're, we're establishing on our side a in, online community uh, uh, devoted to talking about this and uh, you know I'll, I'll be doing a lot of events free on the community so it's selsteinvision.com for, for whoever wants to explore this uh, it's, it, it'll be up and running probably in a matter of weeks from when this interview is done okay so it's it's a uh, you know, the vehicle is to is to talk it up talk it talk yeah. about this this path you know with each other because it works better because groups can keep our inspiration energy up uh, and, and how to do that, of course, we know. Mm -hmm. So, and again, for those that, that didn't catch that, that's CelestineVision.com. And, uh, and if, if you either are driving or you can't write that down or whatever, if you go to the Answers for the Family site, we will make sure that we have it on there. Uh, and you know, there'll be a lot of information there as well as information about the tour. But one of the things for those people out there that are still, they're, they're listening and they're going, I'm, you know, I'm sure there's at least three or four adults in the United States that have not read the Celestine Prophecy. So um, go ahead and just kind of briefly go through the 12 insights so that they can understand, you know, how we got to this point. Sure. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's a matter, you know, what, the way consciousness works in our experience uh, is that it, it's a, always an expansive experience, uh, meaning it's energetic. And what, what is energized is our recognition that we're unique in the world. Not only that, our souls come in with something to do that's important. And the secret to being inspired in life is to allow yourself to be guided toward that mission. Uh, and again, this is provable every step of the way. 
So what what happened with the, with the insights? Uh, they're really uh, already we're already wired for this, in my view. So when I was taking from the human potential uh, information, really, this it's kind of like a psychology of spirituality, right? But it's not complicated. It's very easy. But you have to have the experience of these archetypes within us, pathways in the brain that open up this inspired consciousness. So essentially what, what the first book did was describe these in a way that uh, showed us a new view of the world at a high energy uh, level. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, I didn't make these up. These are not James Redfield's uh, inspired ideas. These are what what the human race has come to through a very uh, critical kind of discussion, the human potential. Uh, and I believe what now the consensus is on how to do this. So it's time to to you know open up our our higher consciousness and our intuitive guidance and all that goes with it. So let's just go through them. Founded over 30 years ago to meet the needs of families in crisis, West Shield has continually focused on resolving issues that negatively impact families and businesses. Our signature therapeutic transportation service helps to ensure that adolescents in crisis are safely transported to specialized schools, programs, and treatment centers with unsurpassed experience and success. We are supported by our full service licensed investigation agency that has legally, professionally, and compassionately located hundreds of runaways and teens. We are experienced and qualified to help, offering solutions which may include referrals to our international network of top professionals in the fields of educational consulting, psychology, psychiatry, and investigations. Simply put, West Shield Adolescent Services and West Shield Investigations are the best solutions when your family is facing a personal crisis. Call. 1-800-899-8585, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's 1-800-899-8585, or visit our website at westshield.com. Thank you. And we're back. You are listening and or viewing us on Answers for the Family. My guest is James Redfield, and we are talking about the Celestine Prophecy and the 12 Insights. Um, and I cannot recommend any higher uh, this book, even though it came out a long time ago. Uh, it still it still resonates today with what's going on today. And and one of the parts that I thought was great is is that this is a story that is weaved through while people are discovering these insights. So uh, again, it is it is one of one of the books that that I put really at, as high as any on my list of ones that I not only enjoyed, but I felt really had an influence on me. Uh, so James, if you could share with us a little bit about, just a little bit, because uh, I think we've only got about 20 minutes. So, uh, so yeah, we've only got about 20 minutes, but just touch on the insights just enough so people have an idea of what we're talking about. Sorry, I'm making noise here. <laughs> Uh, you know, the insights, again, are, are uh, understandings that, that elevate, that we're discovering, that elevate our general level of experience and excitement about being alive, because that's our natural birthright. Uh, the first thing to understand about the world, the first insight is that mysterious coincidences happen in life that are designed as help. In other words, mysterious coincidences bring us information just the right time if we're alert and if we if, uh, strike a, yeah, make the conversation, if it's from a person, uh, go deeper, find out the real meaning for your life. Because uh, this is called, Carl Jung coined this word, synchronicity. The universe is synchronized so that the people you meet in life going to work or, or or taking your walk, uh, they're all um, have meaning. And what happens is in conversations, we have, uh, we trade ideas about our lives and share our life experiences. And suddenly we have a synchronicity. Wow, this is, I was just thinking about changing uh, uh, careers and going into teaching. And this is, 
suddenly I'm, I'm listening to this retired teacher say about what's key to be fulfilled in, 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 in the, you know, the, the gift of teaching. So mm -hmm. these are the kinds of synchronicities that are waiting for us. Now, we have to know other things about the world in order to uh, really uh, make use of these synchronicities, to have enough of them, to have a flow of them. Uh, the second insight is to understand that if you look back in the history of human progress, the people that provided all the, the steps in human consciousness, you know, where we invented nation states and we, we started to, uh, to build uh, the, the basis of a, of, of, of a global awareness of each other uh, and acceptance of that. They, you know, every biography that you read has dozens of mysterious coincidences that led the person into the life that they led and usually into the mission that they accomplished while they were here. So it's really about stepping into your, your own way to help the world evolve positively. Mm -hmm. uh, the third insight is probably one of the most important because it's an understanding of karmic design. So uh, and it works this way. Give it, the whole karmic structure in this spiritual world that we live in is uh, around the idea of giving. Mm -hmm. In other words, <clears throat> something happens when we give, when we think about intuitively how I can help this person that I may not know, but I'm, you know, uh, suddenly thrown into a conversation with or, uh, or, you know, some sense. We all get, and this, humans do this automatically, but we're making it more conscious. We talk, start to talk about our own life journeys to other people. Why? Because we have an intuition that this might be interested, interesting to the other person. What does the other person say very often? You know, I needed to hear that right now. That, that yeah. what, how you handle this problem, boy, that helps me because I'm facing a similar problem. Now, you, all you knew is you got the hit intuitively to share something with the other person, okay? So, but that's the coordination between humans that is, is ready to be, uh, to, to be aware of. Uh, some of these insights would change the world immediately, just one of them. Mm -hmm. But what, what happens at the third insight is you understand karma. And it's why, why we should stay on the, the light side of life, not the dark. Because mm -hmm. if you're a giver and, 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 and want to help people and you're giving that a lot of attention, what happens is you attract more givers into your life. Anyone can prove that this is true. In fact, if you talk to any shopkeeper, you know, it's been successful, uh, you know, they'll say, I had to take care of my, my uh, customers. You know, if I don't, they won't come back. They won't spread the word. Uh, so it's, it's eminently provable that staying on, the, taking the time to help others is dramatically life-changing because all of a sudden, these other people, you draw them into their lives and show up in your lives to give to you. Givers attract givers. Now, if you're a taker and all the, all the ways the dark side takes, uh, whether you're uh, manipulating somebody to get energy from them or, or recognition or you're selling them something they don't need or you're just otherwise leading them astray because of some uh, hidden agenda. If you're a taker, your, your synchronicity flow is going to slow back down because you draw into your life more takers. And so uh, that's a big wake-up call for any of us that unconsciously take, you know. Uh, so it's not, staying in alignment with karma changes your life immediately. And again, people have to become conscious of this conscious of how they take, how they don't look out for the other per people in their lives. Um, but what you do, you prove it to yourself immediately. Life improves because you get these little miracles that come in time. Uh, even before you have a problem, you get a solution. So it's very, very interesting.
to prove this out for yourself. Yeah. And, and let, let me interject something in regards to that, because I found one of the things is, is absolutely what you say is, is that, you know, the, the more that you give, the more givers that come in. It doesn't mean that takers don't still try to come in because of the fact that takers really like to go after givers. Um, it also means that we as givers, we need to learn how to say no. And I think that was one of the steps for me anyway, that that was a huge step positive was to be able to just go, no, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with giving where I'm giving at this point in time, when I recognize that, you know, that particular person is, uh, it, it isn't part of the tribe. No. And, you know, the fourth insight, uh, just builds on this, because the fourth insight is we become aware of when, how we're interpersonally uh, unconsciously taking from others. And that's the part of the book that, that's the, mm -hmm. the favorite part, because it talks about control dramas that we uh, sometimes passively, sometimes uh, aggressively uh, uh, manipulate conversations to get what we want. Uh, so, uh, and again, the, the way to handle that is to, uh, you know, the people that are takers are most short of inner security. You know, they have to have energy, they have to demand energy from other people to feel, to feel powerful and, and, and uh, feel better. It doesn't last very long, you know, <laughs> but it, 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 it's what's wrong with the world, all of the taking out there. Mm -hmm. uh, if we shift to givers, the world would change immediately. And, it's, and, and to do it though, is to do it for yourself because your energy goes up, uh, the little miracles happen in your life. Now, to go on to the fifth insight, that's the second most important in my view. Fifth insight is when you uh, go to the energy source within you for security. And in these days, that's the, some, one of the main callings that we have to do because suddenly uh, all our routines have been collapsed. Uh, maybe our income's being taken away. I mean, it's an insecure moment. Um, but, the, but the way out of this is to spend some time with, your, with yourself. And a lot of people, they don't even want to be alone, much less meditate. I mean, oh my God, that's scary. But in that fear of just spending time alone, everything, any ch mental chatter that comes up, you let it go. It's only 10, 20 minutes, let it go. Be with yourself, it's, it's, it's meditating. Uh, it's expanding your quiet mind and your ability to listen internally because that's where the intuitive help comes from. Uh, so uh, that's why everybody's meditating. I mean, it's everywhere, right? And, and what makes it even more powerful though is to also don't just let go of the mental chatter. That calms your mental, mental uh, side, but let go of the emotional chatter. What I should have said to the other person, you know, the, how I was hurt, I'm still mad about how being hurt uh, and by others and are, let that chatter go. Let, the, let those feelings go and concentrate on feeling the emotion of love without an object. It's called agape love. Yeah, you know, we've all felt love for a child, for a parent, for our first puppy, a first blush of romance as a teenager. You know, we know what love feels like, yeah. but we think that it, we always have to have an object. It's a state of emotional state we have to practice. And once that heart, once the heart opens, then that's the greatest emotional stability that you can have. Mm -hmm. Because you're sustained by this love, the negative emotions bounce around. So this is this takes some effort. You have to prove this to yourself. And <clears throat> that to be real, and it, it, it is. The sixth insight is when uh, the longer you meditate, you start getting this intuitive guidance. And at first, it's just to do something to prepare yourself. It's, it's intuitive guidance of an interest that you suddenly think about that, oh, man, this is, I'm, and, and, and a synchronicity will happen. Uh, if you follow your guiding intuitions, logically, that's important. Don't quit the job and move to Australia before you actually have some kind of income over there. You know, 
logically, but act on it as the best you can with your logic and try to, to uh, act on the intuition. What happens is that's when these synchronicities happen more often because you're putting yourself in a place. If the intuition is go to the library, go to the library and, and see what happens. Wait for something to happen. Always, you'll see somebody, your book will jump out at you, whatever it is. This is the, the, the enlightening mystery of life unfolding. And, and again, we know this is real because we know how to do it. Uh, the seventh insight is when you realize that there's a mechanism, you know, your intuitive guidance, as I just said, is, uh, is if, you, if you act on it, a synchronicity will occur. And then it's important to know what question that brings up. So if a synchronicity takes you down your journey, it's always going to be a question. Well, what do I do now? How do I solve this problem? How do I solve that problem? You'll get an intuitive hit of what to do, and then uh, another synchronicity will happen. So it's a flow. We're looking for a flow of syn synchronicity. Eighth insight is one of the most important because if you're depressed, if you give energy to another just forget, forget, you know, you may be too tense to meditate, you know, because it's scary for whatever reason. It's scary now for a lot of people. Just go try to help another person. You can do it online. You can do it uh, wherever you can. But it's, there's a precise way that you give energy. And that is to uh, make sure that you are... Uh, intending for energy to come into you and out to them. This is love energy. This is agape inspired energy that comes out, goes into another person. Now, they may not even feel it right away, but if you're in a conversation, if you look for the, uh, uh, the, 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 their higher self, you know, their, their wisdom, the, the, the expression on their face that that um, where they're connecting with their own intuitive guidance and all that comes with that. What happens is sometimes they'll pop into a higher conscious just for the first time, just by talking to you. That's why when you talk to people giving energy and, and looking for the, the genius behind the eyes of the other person, they'll pop into that. And, you know, they may, as soon as you leave, they may not hold on to it, but it's, it's an energy that is, uh, fills you up first. That's it. So it's a healing, energizing thing to do to give people people energy, and to remember to do it every time. That's the flow. Okay. So James, let me let me just jump in real quick. So for everybody out there, again, if you get the the book, there there are twelve insights. Um, we have a couple of of um, listener questions that have come in during the show that are either come in through email or instant message. I wanna get these in real quick as well. Actually, one's a comment, one's a question. First one reads, uh, I'm a longtime fan of your work. In fact, I copied the text of your opening scene of the Celestine Prophecy and made a screensaver for my computer. And then they have in quotes, look not from the mind, but from the soul for the life that is coming is already before us, waiting to open the world. Just look more closely, find the eyes to see, end of quote. It says your, your 12 insights were so beautifully presented, uh, it opened my eyes to a new way of living. I just wanted to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the past and continued work you are doing for all of us in times of such distress and distraction. Much gratitude from Catherine in New Jersey. Well, thank you, Catherine. That's that's those are great comments. Uh, we'd love to have you in our community. Uh, you should uh, explore selfingvision.com. Uh, okay. I'd love to meet you. But thanks again for the question. All right. And then the a question that said, uh, I had not heard of the Celestine Prophecy uh, uh, until uh, I, um, I brought this interview to the attention of my mother. She flew over to one of her many bookshelves and handed me two of your books. Uh, I read them both and watched the movie on Amazon Video. 
I am 27 years old, by the way. So the book was written the year I was born. So you know, uh, I'm, I'm having a movie night next Saturday for a group of friends to introduce them to this message of hope, which I love. Thank you, Valerie in San Francisco. Thank you, Valerie. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that's great. Um, so um, just, we've just got about another minute. So what are some tools and techniques um, that, that we can use to empower ourselves to create inner harmony today? If you can give somebody a couple of things, and again, we still want everybody afterwards to go to, uh, to uh, CelestineVision.com, but in the meantime, what are a couple of tools that you, that you can give people? Hello. Wow. Uh, we may have lost James. So um, with that, um, we were about out of time anyway. So, um, <clears throat> so let me talk a little bit about next week. Um, uh, the overwhelming stress of life, which is motherhood and relationships, will continue uh, uh, on long after this current health crisis has ended. And uh, no one addresses these issues more uniquely and better than Tova Lee, author of an Eft at 40. <laughs> so be sure to put us on your calendar and tune in next Monday when Tova will share with us how she broke out of the mom box uh, in a most candid interview about marriage, fidelity, sexuality, parenting, uh, and and an item that many women struggle with silently, uh, body image after having children. And please visit our archives of past interviews at AnswersForTheFamily.com or subscribe to the show through iTunes, iHeart, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, or SoundCloud. And please leave a review. It will help us improve and reach more people. And I want you to know that we greatly appreciate it. And the next time you're on Facebook or Twitter, please remember to stop by our page, check out some of the latest posts. If you like them, please like us and spread the word. Now for everybody out there, be good humans and be with us next week on Answers for the Family. You're listening to Answers for the Family with Alan Cardoza right here on LA Talk Radio.